Hello folks, Simon here. Welcome back to Chrono Cross and to episode 2 of our walkthrough. Now, in between episodes, I did put out a little video, which you may have watched, just talking about some of the gameplay enhancements with this remastered version of the game. And one of those is the No Encounters toggle. So, that is not that one. Yeah, that one there. Now, one thing to note is that on Star Level Zero, which we are currently on, we can still gain some minor stat increases. So you want to make sure you do enough random enemy encounters that you stop seeing any of those minor stat increases after battle. And that's because soon when we face our first boss, we're going to go to star level 1 and we'll miss out on those initial stat level bonuses. So don't do that. Just make sure you fight enough enemy encounters to get them now. Only about 7 to 10 encounters will be required. So just something to bear in mind with that little no encounters toggle that you don't overuse it. Right, okay, without any further ado, let's head into our first destination of the day. This is Lizard Rock North. Now, this is a very beautiful area, and there's a few things we can do here. First of all, we are going to have to move this little rock, or quite large, substantial rock, or whatever it is, out of the way there. And you can see there are, a, well, at least one treasure chest. There's actually a number of treasures that we can find throughout our... Uh, visit here so we're going to make sure that we do get everything now our main objective is to collect the three komodo scales that's the purpose of our visit and if we just head over here we can see that there is indeed one of those komodo dragons but it's very difficult to catch because every time we get close to it it likes to run away through the tunnel so all we need to do is push this boulder here and it's important you catch it on the right side. If you push it over here, then it pretty much gets stuck. So just approach it from the left side and then tap the confirm button. And once the Komodo dragon can no longer escape through the other side of the tunnel, we simply need to run into the tunnel ourselves to enter battle with it. And this is what we'll need to do to get our first Komodo scale. So eventually I'm quite possibly going to edit out a lot of the battles just for the purposes of you know speeding along the videos and stuff since once you get used to the battle system many of the random encounters will become somewhat samey but as this is still going to be new to many of you I am going to keep the battles included probably for at least this episode and obviously bosses going forward will always be included since they are somewhat unique now, the game tends to move you up and down the 1, 2, and 3 attacks as it sees fit. But, of course, you don't have to follow along with what the game recommends to you. You can still go ahead and select any of the other attacks from the weak attacks or the strong attacks. And I'm not going to bother using any elements at the moment. There's really no need to for these encounters. In fact, I'm... I think I've only got Cure equipped anyway right now, so not a whole lot we could do, even if I wish to do so. I understand the battle system is a little bit confusing when you first get started out, but don't worry, it does all start to make sense. And one of the good things, well, I suppose some will consider it a good thing, is that there's not a whole lot of grinding to do in this game. And look at this, we actually got a fair fair whack of stat boosts there for both of our party members, which is really nice. So it's important we get all of those before we do engage the boss, as I mentioned. And we got our first Komodo scale as well. Now let's go back and fight the beach bum that we saw that was guarding this treasure chest here. Another simple enemy. Along with a couple of simple ads. I think those ads can actually spawn other beach bums. At least they are known to do that from time to time. I have seen it. I'm pretty sure it is these ads here that can do that. So you might want to focus them down. Boing, 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 boing. And one more round should finish this off. We can also use turbo mode or any of the gameplay enhancements to get through these battles a little bit faster. 
So as you've noted by this point, hopefully, enemy encounters are not random here. So they are visible always on the world map. And we get the fireball element. Now, oops, didn't mean to go down here just yet. Let's just head back. We might respawn some enemies. Yep. Nope, I think we're safe. I just wanted to make sure that we hadn't missed out on anything. We will be coming back into this area anyway, so that's no problem. And for these beach bums now, I will just go ahead and edit them out. Yeah, once you've seen one encounter you've, of, of what, an enemy type, you've pretty much seen them all. But don't worry, once I start doing new things in battle with elements and stuff, I'll make sure to show that to you guys. So there we saw another Komodo dragon. And there's also a beach bum running around on this log up here. We're going to go and jump over to there in a moment. But before we do that, there's another item we can grab. I've actually killed all the enemies on this screen. Now, maybe that will be the easiest way to do this going forward. Once we enter a, a different screen, just kill everything rather than editing out each individual battle. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments in terms of the random, or not random, but the enemy encounters. How you think I should edit them. But let's just go ahead now, head down here, and if we knock this rock down into the pond, a little bit finicky, there we go. This will actually budge the treasure chest out of the way. It's a little slow, so let's just help it along a bit here with the turbo mode. Oh, this feature is going to be helpful at certain times, for sure. Uh, we can out open this for a silver lupe. So another accessories item, which we can equip immediately. So let's just go ahead and do that, shall we? We can actually give three accessories to our party members here. So let's go ahead and give this again to Surge. It will have a slight boost now to his hit percentage, which is always nice. And what we want to do is head up here. We can jump onto this green root, branch, log, whatever it is. Taking us into the next screen. And another encounter. Okay, right. This next little section is interesting. Bit of a mini game, if you like. What we need to do is just head back to the previous screen here, but from the cliff. And we need to drop down on the next Komodo dragon right as it goes under us. It's a little bit hard to time. Did I get it? No. No, I didn't even press the confirm button. Uh, so let's try that again. Now, you have to time it right. Go, 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 go. Did I get it? Oh, first time. Wonderful. That will give you a battle. Don't worry if you miss it and you've dropped down and it runs away. All you need to do is run back onto the, jump back onto the log, I should say. And then come back round. That beach bum that we fought will no longer be there. So you won't have to worry about fighting that repeatedly. So successfully defeating the enemies in this battle should give us our next Komodo scale. And there we have it. Wonderful. So two down. Still one more to go. And let's just go ahead and make our exit up here in the top left corner of the screen. And as you can see, similar area, couple of enemies, and also some chests scattered around as well. So I'll clear the place out. Okay, so the items we want to get, first of all, if we head down into this section, just under the bridge, we can open a chest for a tablet. Which is effectively cure, but it's a, you know, it's a limited use item element rather than one that is forever available. And then we're going to head all the way around here. I'm going to ignore the Komodo dragon for now until we've looted this place. So what we want to do is head down to uh, just over here where there's a hole in the ground. And we're going to jump into that. Just have to tap the confirm button when you get close to it, of course. And first of all, there's a chest up here. This one contains a bone ingredient. And if we just head over to this door and through this little tunnel, we have another chest. This one for an ivory helmet. So we can actually, I believe, just go ahead and equip that. And we're going to give that one to our little doggy friend here. Since I believe Surge already has one and Poshul does not, obviously. So... That should just see us through uh, for the next few fights, at least. Okay. Right, so go back to this section here, and this will take us back to the previous location. 
And we're actually going to chase that Komodo dragon now. But it's worth noting that when we do so, we're going to be automatically put into a little boss fight. So, first off, make sure you've gained all your little mini stat gains. Unfortunately, there's no real way to know that you've done this other than you no longer gain stats after battles. So if you're, you know, not getting plus one HP and stuff once you've finished fights, then you should be okay. Uh, what we're going to do is just make sure we have some elements equipped. Now, the little boss fight we're going to do has the blue elements. That's what the boss innately has. So we want to use red elements where possible because that is counter to the blue elements. And it will also mean that the field elements don't fill up with blue which would also be a bad thing don't worry if you're not understanding what i'm saying just go ahead and make sure you're using red elements so surge can just keep the tablet equipped that is cure again it's a consumable rather than a permanent element but it's red so that's absolutely fine and if we just move over oops did not mean to press turbo speed there uh, move over to potion here then the fireball that we looted on the previous screen is a good item to go for so let's go ahead and equip that okay so both of our team members have red elements which we can use to again just cancel out the blue elements of the boss and with that done we are ready to move on so let's just go ahead and start chasing the komodo dragon there's not a whole lot to this other than just keep running around you are actually slightly faster than the beast itself so eventually you will catch up if you run into obstacles that is going to slow you down but it's really not that difficult now this itself isn't the boss fight it is a regular enemy encounter just as the previous komodo dragon fight was but just bear in mind that you're not going to have any kind of break after this fight the boss will appear immediately so make sure you don't use your elements here just to use normal physical attacks is probably best in my opinion. And then we can save the elements for the, the next part of the encounter. Oh, what a miss. Hopefully we won't get attacked here and can enter the boss fight at full health. Yep. This is the Mother Komodo, or Mama Komodo, I believe it's called. So, let's just get into it. This boss has 160 HP, which isn't a huge amount. I'm just going to use physical attacks with Surge because he doesn't have any elements that will do damage. And we can just go ahead now and open with a fireball. Now, watch what happens. This is the first time we're using an element here in battle. Watch what happens when we use the fireball to post your stamina, which is currently at 6.3. So here comes the fireball. We do a lovely amount of damage there. Well, 16, which is okay. Uh, but Poshaw's stamina has now been reduced to minus 0 0.7. Yeah, elements use a lot of stamina. And that means that Poshaw can't do anything right now. So in order to boost up a party member's stamina... We have to use our other party member's physical attack. So as Surge uses attack here, notice how Poshal's stamina is going to increase. That is how the battle system works. And it doesn't normally increase to fall like that, but hey, I'm not going to complain. So now we stick to physical attacks again. Until we're able to use our element, our fireball element. Let's see if we can... Go for a nice chain here. Yes, we can. And then Surge, who again only has the uh, tablet element in the red element section. So we're just going to ignore that for now. And just start laying on the damage. Another perfect set of hits there. Lovely stuff. He does have that accessory as well, which boosts his hit percentage, which is nice. Aqua Beam is thoroughly unpleasant. Uh, but, oh no, we still can't use that because we need to boost up from physical attacks again first. Uh, but we can heal that with multiple heals that we have. Once we get to Surge's turn. But I don't think we're going to need to. I think we should just keep pummeting away here at the Mama Komodo. And I think we will 
easily be able to kill it before it kills us. Maybe another round or two. Or not. There we have it. And that kind of introduced us to the element system as well. The very basics of it. But you saw in the top left how when the boss cast the aqua beam, it put the blue on the elements list. And we managed to, to push that out by casting fireball and what have you. Uh, or at least we would have done if we'd have got another round in. So, very good. And now we've got our star level, which means we can start getting some mini stat boosts again from random en enemy encounters. Again, another 7 to 10 fights should see us through with those. However, the star level itself will also give us a bunch of stats. So look at this. Surge gets a nice bunch of HP and strength and all of that good stuff. And so does Potial. So that's really, really helpful. And yeah, we just need to make sure we exhaust our mini stat boosts now before the next fight or the next boss fight. But there we have our next Komodo scale, which is perfect, just what we wanted. Right, yep, yeah, we do have all three Komodo scales in our inventory. So Lena should be satisfied. If we head over to the left side, we'll make our way over to the beach. Oh, let's take the opportunity to save, of course. We never want to miss out on that. Although the auto save feature in the Radical Dreamers edition of the game is very nice, I've got to say. This is Opasa Beach. And this is going to give us a number of cutscenes. Uh, including some pretty important story events, actually. There you are. Sorry I'm late. I hope you didn't wait too long, Serge. Posho, I didn't expect to see you here. So this is where you went off to. We Lee Nath here. How are you doing? Ooh, are you two on a date? Sorry, me think me should leave you to a own. Okay, yeah, trying to read the dialogue from that character is not the easiest thing. Oh, please, don't be silly. Poshushu. Well, how'd it go? Did you get the Komodo dragon scales? Oh, they're beautiful. I'll be able to make a great necklace with these. Thank you, Serge. And you too, Potion. Um, no problem. It sure has been a long time since we last came here. We used to come so often. The sea never changes, does it? It's been rolling in and out like this since long before we were born. It's been here for eternity, it seems. It's probably seen many things, heard many things. It'll probably keep rolling in and out, in and out, long after our lifetime without a single change. Hey, Serge. Remember that time we sat and talked like this back when we were kids? With the gentle sea breeze and the tranquil sound of the waves? Just the two of us, talking. Do you still remember that day? Now folks, here we have another dialogue choice. And remember what I mentioned in the previous episode? These are kind of important and this one is no different. It's important you select I remember here. This will allow us access to a technique for Lena later on. Oh really? You do? Remember? So you haven't forgotten about the promise we made that day? Oh, I'm getting some Final Fantasy 7 vibes with this bit of dialogue here. <laughs> that makes me happy. But aren't memories strange? We'll also have another dialogue choice that we need to pay attention to in a moment. Just when you think that you've forgotten about something, it comes floating back into your heart. I guess it's just lying there in wait, waiting for the right moment. Why, we might even remember this very moment someday. 
in 10, 20 years when we're all grown up and married and have kids of our own. When that time comes, I wonder what kind of adults we'll be. What kind of life will I be leading? I wonder what I'll make of this day. And we can choose, we'll forget it eventually, or we'll never forget this day. And of course, you want to select the latter. Yeah, I hope you're right. Um, Serge, there's been something I've been wanting to... Surge. What what what's wrong, Surge? Surge? Yeah. Our man Surge is having a little bit of a contemplation moment, isn't he? And now something happens to interrupt. Well, what's going on here? I don't even think Surge would fully understand, so what chance do we have? Unless you've played before, of course. What are you doing there, boy? It's dangerous to sleep out here. Well now, it seems we've been out for a little bit, but where is Lena? Are you alright boy? What on earth are you doing lying down anyway? For a second there, I thought you might have been a dead body washed ashore. Huh? Where's Lena? You were the only one I saw when I got here. Are you a friend of Lena's? I believe she's in the village, babysitting. Well, I'd best be on my way. Anyway, if you are looking for Lena, you should stop by the village. You know, you shouldn't be playing out here, boy. Wouldn't want anything to happen to you now. Sergey Poo, you are finally up. Something went whoosh, and me was out cold too. Me woke up fur though. Me went to go rock around. This is really challenging. <laughs> but no sign of Lena anywhere. Do you think Lena spontaneously combusted? Me wonder if she's okay. Yes, no, uh... No jumping to conclusions, eh? Right, let's move back. So we're going to head back into the previous area. Again, we can go ahead and save, of course. Although we do have that auto save system in place. But I do love me old manual saves. I'm a bit of a traditionalist like that, you see. Okay, and we're going to go back to the lizard rock area. Now, what's this? It looks like there are some new enemy encounters. Well, these fish are fairly simple. There's a number of them. There are a number of fights. So I'll show you the first one. And then I'll skip ahead to when they are all defeated. These are Opa fish. I'd say they have a slightly increased amount of HP over the other random enemies we've been fighting up until this point. But really not a huge amount more. The fireball, however, is a nasty little inclusion there on their attack repertoire. Uh, one thing to say though is that we should at least start getting some more stat boosts now that we are star level 1. And by the way, when you gain a new star level, you know those additional stats that we gained? 
They will be given to all party members, even those that haven't yet joined our party. So, fortunately, nobody misses out on them. Something I forgot to mention earlier, but it is worth pointing out, of course. Yep, here come our minor stat boosts, and we shall heal up. So that should be the only enemies on the screen, although there are four encounters with those things. Okay, we're going to jump back into the hole again, because as you can see, the chest has respawned that we opened. This time, it contains a feather. And I'll just check if anything else has re-shown itself, and it doesn't look like it has. So that's absolutely fine, just that one item. Okay, so I think we can go ahead now and actually leave this area. Sometimes turbo mode can make things a little bit more challenging in terms of controlling the party and what have you. And if we head to the northeast exit, this will take us directly back to the first screen here. Where we can then go ahead and leave Lizard Rock altogether. Oh, look at that. Another chest, treasure chest spawn. This time it contains another ivory helmet. Nice. Right, well, let's go ahead now and leave, taking ourselves back to the world map. So, story-wise, we do want to head back to Arnie Village. Uh, but before we do that, there's a couple of other things that I want to check out. So, if we head back, first of all, to Cape Howl, I do believe the treasures have respawned here as well. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and... nab these. And these contain... dum 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 dum, -dum drum roll, and electro jolt. New elements, and then just up here, uh, we can get a, another bone. Oh, by the way, if you head north, there's nothing really you can do there. There's like some kind of grave marker, but you can't interact with it, so that's why I'm not going up there, in case you were wondering. Now, we're going to head over to the right, to the marshes that we visited previously, that I told you to keep in your mind, even though we couldn't do anything there, the Hydra marshes. Well, now we can do something. So the NPC has moved that was blocking the way. But one thing you need to note about this area is that the waters here are quite mean. They're actually poisonous. So as you can see, Surge and Potion are currently at full HP. But as we head into these waters and, and try and walk around, we're going to start taking damage. Two damage per second of walking, I believe it is. So yeah, that's not good. However... The good news is that at least at the moment, there's no enemy encounters. So we can still go exploring and the damage we take isn't going to reduce us to below 1 HP. So it's not going to kill us. So we can actually explore and you don't have to worry about healing, which is why we're going to do this now. Because we're going to heal up to full when we get back to the village. So we're just going to go ahead and do a couple of things here. If we begin by heading over... Uh, to this side, try and dodge the NPC there. We do have a treasure chest located just over here for a tablet. Nothing too exciting, but it's there, so we're going to get it. And then we're going to head through the northernly exit. And somewhere around here, there should be another item for us to, to grab. Oh, just down here. Look at that. A, a bushwhacker element. There's actually not much else to do up here for the time being. So we're going to head back here to the previous screen. And head out of the left-hand side exit. Now we've got a few screens to get through, but this is worth it. There's a useful thing we're going to be able to do. A useful key item we're going to be able to grab up here. Uh, it's a save point. However, in this game, you can see that save points or memory things, I think they're called, uh, do not restore your HP. So just bear that in mind. Help if we go the right way. Oh, there is a chest we can grab first. Another electro jolt. And the key item is from an NPC who's located just up this way here. So speak to this guy. This is the captain. He says, hey, you got to be crazy to walk around this forest without protective gear. I have an extra set with me. Take them. This way, you'll be able to walk through the marsh without getting hurt. 
Perfect, some safety gear. Yep, and as you might expect, based on the description we were just given, we can now walk around those marshes in the poison water and not lose our HP. For now, though, that's all we're going to do in this location. But at least we're going to be at a somewhat advantage when we come back here properly. Now that we've got that safety gear. So all we're going to do is retrace our steps. And this is what turbo mode is for. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if it actually slows me down rather than allows me to speed up. And now we can walk through without that juddery all happening over the screen. Uh, not that it would, you know, do anything to us since we're already at 1 HP. But like I say, for next time. And we're going to head back to Arnie Village at this point. And it's also going to have been redistributed with various items. So, by the way, you can also go to the shop here. I know that we looted it earlier. Uh, there's a number of items that you may not have. Let me just check what elements are available here. Well, we, we do have all of these except the medicine uh, and antidote. So these are, again, consumable elements. And let's just have a, a, a brief nosy at the weapons and armor wares. Okay, we've actually got some ingredients to craft the ivory dagger. Uh, if we wanted to do that, we don't have the carapace yet though. And the ivory vest and the ivory mail, but you know, we've already got two of those anyway. So, ivory helmet we'd need screws for. I've actually got three and only two equipped. But very, very brief introduction there to the crafting system in this game. Oh, before we head into here, I want to go into the cafe. Ah, little child, please move. Position yourself somewhere less inconvenient, if you don't mind. So, yeah, we did manage to get an item from this pot. Uh, no, it was a barrel previously, but now, look, it is a pot. But the same rules apply. Interact with it three times, just as we did with the barrel. And then eventually, we'll annoy it. Because, yeah, I guess pots get annoyed. And we'll get an ice lance element. Not too bad. We can also speak to the waitress. But this is some interesting dialogue. Hello there. I haven't seen you around before. Are you from Termina? So how's it going over there? I bet everyone's really excited about the Viper Festival. What? My poems? What are you talking about? I gave up on them ages ago. It was just a stupid dream I was obsessed with. I never did have any talent. But how do you know about that? Nobody knows about my poetry. Oh, it really doesn't matter anymore whether I'm writing poems or not. Nobody would give a hoot about someone writing poems in a tiny little cafe in the middle of nowhere. Oh, a tiny little cafe in the middle of nowhere, huh? But just remember, dreams do come true. Do you honestly believe that? We live in the middle of nowhere in this tiny village, living, leading small lives. Nothing's ever going to change, no matter how hard you try. That's just the reality of it all. Yeah, so, if you've been following along with the dialogue of the NPCs, that's a little bit weird. That she has no recollection, it seems, of the poetry we were talking about earlier on. Um, if we head into the back room, though, then there's a curtain here we can open, and that chest is still available, this time with a tablet. And now we can go ahead and leave the cafe for the time being. And we're going to head over. Uh, nope, not over here. Meant to go into Poe Shaw's house. Jeez, just this hot here. I believe the bucket has been replenished, if I remember correctly. Yep. This time with another photon ray element. 
Oh, we can also chat to the NPC again. Greetings, Sonny. You're a new face in this village. A friend of Lena, perhaps? You'll find Lena out there on the pier, babysitting. Hmm, a new face is what we are described as being. Again, very unusual. So let's head into Sergi's house, shall we? I'm sure everything's normal in here. The room looks different, Shu. Sergi Poo. Mama Sergi Poo, did you redecorate? It looks a bit depressing. Hmm. Somebody's been redecorating, have they? Let's go into Sergi's bedroom. Looks like this room redecorated too. It's kind of a... Looks like a junk room. It's so duffy in here. Okay, let's open the curtain, shall we? So we can actually see what we're doing. Pretty sure there's an item we can grab. Yeah, there it is. A magma bomb. And if we head over here, we get some interesting dialogue. Who the? What are you doing in my house? My house isn't a playground for you kids, alright? Go play outside. Who, who are you, mister? This is Sergi Poo's house, isn't it? Where is mummy Sergi Poo? Who? Marge? Who the heck's that? I've lived in this house for five years now. Sorry, that name doesn't ring a bell. For five years? Is that true, mister? Poshu, this is really, really weird. Whatever, with all your gibberish, man, just get out of here. Well, that's not very welcoming. Okay, we did barge into their house. Although, you know, we did believe it was our own home, so... And, oh, before we forget, since we're still on 1 HP from our little venture into the marshes, we can actually speak to the Komodo dragon and choose to rest up. However, it does cost 100 G. Not that you get told or informed about that until afterwards. Darn swindler. But it is what it is. And at least it's a heal. <laughs> That is one cheeky Komodo dragon, for sure. Right, so now we can actually make our way over to the pier. And we're going to speak to Lena. We'll see what she thinks of the whole weird situation we've got going on here. Lena! So this is where you were. How could you just leave and then go back on your own? Go back on my own? What are you talking about, Poshul? And... Who are you? Have we met somewhere before? Are you from Termina? Poshu, What are you saying, Lena? Hey! Yeah, you! Don't be trying to pull any moves on our Lena, you jerk. Don't be silly. Don't go swimming too far out now, you hear? Okay, gotcha. Kids. I guess kids will be kids. Don't worry about them. Hmm, you know. You look a lot like the boy who used to live next door to me. Okay, I don't think this one matters so much, which one we choose, but let's go ahead and say what happened to him. What happened to him? Why do you want to know? It's really none of your business. That boy died. He drowned when he was very young. 
This all happened 10 years ago. Soon after, his mother passed away too. I was still very young back then, so I don't remember too well, but my mum says his name was... Serge. And then we can say... I'm Serge. You're Serge? Oh, stop that. That's not even funny. The boy is dead. Don't you understand? That boy. I guess I kind of liked him. If that boy was still alive today, I wonder what would have become of us. Sure is weird. Why am I opening up to you like this? Well, I guess there's no use thinking about the past. It's not like Serge is going to come back. Mum always tells me I shouldn't dwell on lost loved ones. You can find his grave up on Cape Howe. Actually, why don't you go and visit the grave sites? No one's been up there in a while. Well, I still have some chores to finish. Sorry I blew up at you like that. Goodbye, stranger. Okay, well, we seem to be starting to get some answers, although the more answers we get, the more questions we have. It appears that the events that we did earlier in the game, collecting the Komodo scales and meeting up with Lena at the beach, was now 10 years ago from the perspective of the rest of the characters in the game. So we're going to be heading back over now to Cape Hell and going to the gravestone that we didn't visit before because there was nothing we could do there. So let's see what happens, shall we? But we're going to save that for the next episode. So thank you so much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to drop a like. Make sure you stay subscribed for future Chrono Cross videos going forward. And I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.